It has become increasingly common to hear the phrase, I just don't find games fun anymore. Since the overindulgence of video games in quarantine, everyone seems to be horribly burned out and dejected at the idea of continuing to play their supposed favourite games, with no clear reason why. But in reality, this outcome is to be expected if we look at the psychology behind it. Our favourite games, as much as we love them, tend to feed on our expectations and memories of good times as a player to get us to continue playing. They rely on the memories we have of the first few times we opened up the game, revelling in the novelty of it, getting rushes of dopamine as we succeeded for the first few times. Unfortunately, as we keep playing the same game and the novelty of its mechanics begin to wear off, you are left repeating the same actions over and over, chasing the feeling that you remember so vividly. Dr. K from Healthy Gamer GG made an interesting video on this interaction that I will link in the description, where he goes through in more detail how and why this happens and how to get games to be fun again. Another aspect is the high expectations we hold ourselves to after we've played a game for a significant amount of time. When you first open a game like Overwatch, League of Legends, TF2, or any high skill cap game, you have no expectations of how well you will perform, so even slight success feels rewarding. It doesn't matter to you if you die 20 times and get a single kill because you're new and you can't expect to be good. But when you boot up that same game after 600 hours of playtime, your expectations of yourself change. You've had those games where you were the best out of everyone and made plays that defied the odds. So you expect good performance from yourself, making it even more demoralizing when you play at an average or below average level, leading to frustration, anger, and a state lots of players get into where they just go through the motions, continuing to play the game they once loved, not because they still enjoy it, but just because it's what they do and it's what they have done for hundreds of hours. Other games aren't able to immediately replicate the dizzying heights that one game did straight away, so they are dropped in favor of returning to their comfort zone. They ask themselves why they still play this game they hate, and then queue up for another ranked match. The saddest part about all of this is that we're set up to fail by these droning yearly franchises and live service games that seek to leech off of every last good memory of a franchise in hopes of getting another sale or purchase of an overpriced microtransaction. The specific series I'd like to use to exemplify this is Far Cry. In 2012, Ubisoft released Far Cry 3 and it was very well received. It had some interesting nuanced ideas about maintaining a sense of self when the world around you is chaotic. This was played out on a backdrop of a tropical open world with a large number of outposts to conquer, things to fetch, and animals to kill. It was all around a pretty great game that did a lot for the genre. Ubisoft realized this, so they did it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And finally we have Far Cry 6, the most recent and most blatant example of Ubisoft copy and pasting Far Cry 3 to eke out every last cent from those who are still stuck trying to recapture what they felt in 2012. The environment is almost identical, the core gameplay loop is the same, capture enemy outposts and climb up radio towers, occasionally interrupted by missions where you follow a waypoint and replacing the interesting characters and narrative of Far Cry 3 is a shoehorn celebrity cameo from Giancarlo Esposito and a contrived reason for you to do the same thing you've been doing since Far Cry 3. Nine years on and Ubisoft gives us a downgraded, lazy and honestly disrespectful entry in the series. And if you're wondering, yes, I played Far Cry 6 for this video and it was still a waste of £30. This isn't just something Ubisoft does. You can see it all over the AAA landscape, with major developers continually rehashing old ideas and formulas instead of innovating and building off of what works. Even Nintendo exploits nostalgia to sell more games at inflated prices. But it's not all bad. There are games that have innovated massively and are definitely worth your time. Breath of the Wild, for example, has pushed the open world genre to new heights, with a greater emphasis on curiosity-driven exploration rather than map markers. Sifu, a hard-as-nails martial arts game, has some interesting ideas about difficulty, and intends to get the player to master the mechanics of the game to be able to beat it. Before Your Eyes has an interesting new take on storytelling, getting the player to keep their eyes open to watch the story unfold, and skipping scenes if they blink. And Undertale subverts video game tropes as a whole, with smart dialogue and interesting hybrid turn-based and bullet hell combat. If you are struggling with this, I would highly recommend watching the Dr. K video, because he goes into detail about strategies like dopamine detoxes, which will help bring the fun back in games. But honestly, I think this issue is something that plagues the industry on a larger scale, where we as consumers need to stop buying into formulaic, churned out titles, and instead seek out innovation from developers. The indie scene thrives on new and innovative concepts, so I would suggest looking around for some lesser known titles, or also game jams like GMTK's yearly one that produces many high quality demos of really unique ideas that you can find on itch.io for free, I'll leave a link in the description. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, subscribe, and of course any feedback on the video would be appreciated.